Pope St. John Paul II, one of the most influential men in the church and in the modern world. He lived as an underground seminarian under communist Poland and outsmarted the Polish secret police many times. He spoke 11 languages. He was a poet and a playwright, and if you put together everything he wrote, it would equal the length of 20 Bibles. One year into his papacy, he spent nine days in Poland. The effects of his visit sparked the end of communism, not only in Poland, but throughout Eastern Europe. This Polish man had the ability to live his faith with boldness and instill hope into a generation growing up in the turmoil of the 20th century. He inspired many to become saints, but who inspired him to pursue sainthood, to become the man that would change the course of history? It's not difficult to be a saint. In 1935, these were the words spoken from the pulpit to a Sunday congregation in Krakow, and they changed the life of a man least expected. A quiet tailor, uninvolved, and a loner, Jan Taranowski grew up thinking that sanctity was only for priests and religious. In a time during Nazi occupation, when a third of the priests were deported from Poland, Jan, a layman, felt a call to make a difference. It wasn't easy for Jan. He had a high voice, a strange figure, and an intense demeanor. Despite this, 15 men committed to meeting weekly to pray the rosary. They were invited into a friendship to pray, share their faith, and because of this, 11 became priests. Christ called Jan to invest in these men. One of them was Karawatiwa, the man who became Pope St. John Paul II. The world will never be the same because of Jan Taranowski's yes. I came to college desiring to be a good person, and I had an opportunity my first week of school to, to hear Chris um, give a talk. And as he spoke, I got to hear um, him speak of Jesus in, in a unique way, in a dynamic way um, that wrestled with my heart. Um, I felt like he was speaking directly to me. I, I told him, like, I, I want to get involved. I, I desire to know more. But then I ended up walking away from that, that talk and actually never speaking to Chris again for another two years. Before long, I found myself getting sucked into to all the temptations that college has to offer, and just being complacent in, in all areas of my life. But I thought this would lead me down a path um, that would give me the best college experience. And before long, faith was no longer a priority. Amidst all of this, uh, the Lord put Chris back into my life my junior year. As I met him again, I could tell that he was still living out the virtues that he was claiming to live back when I heard him the first time my freshman year. Chris challenged me to grow in prayer, to sit with our Lord in silence, to experience the Mass, the sacraments in a, in a new, unique way. Chris invested in me. He gave me an example of what it meant to be a man who can enjoy the things of this world, but first and foremost be a man of Christ. Through our friendship, Chris introduced me to many other men who were living out their faith and living out that relationship with Jesus Christ and showed me what that looked like. The Lord could use so many different ways, but he decided to use Chris, this one faithful man, to be the bridge that brought me back to him. He invited me into a friendship. Chris inspired me to overcome my fears, to live a life of authentic joy. Jesus challenged Chris to go on mission, and my life will never look the same because he said yes. Yeah.